Can is tea. How are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast. We're breathing life back into Irish myths with traditional Irish storytelling accompanied by music. My name is Sarika, and this week we have the story of the Piper and the Puka, told by Aaron, the other co-founder of Candlelit Tales, and my little brother. Stay tuned till the end of the podcast to hear our latest news. We would not be able to continue to make these podcasts without the support of our patrons, which we are very grateful for. So thank you. If you'd like to contribute, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or share, subscribe, like or leave a review if you like what we do. It all makes a difference. But for now, sit back and listen to this week's story. Take it away, Aaron. So we're going to tell a story right now to celebrate the day of November. People forget the 1st of November was known as the day of the puka. And well, the puka is one of the famous creatures that we have in Ireland in this tradition of storytelling, I guess. The puki were, was the Irish for ghosts and puka literally was translated as ghost. But there's one particular puka that takes the credit. This particular kind of a puka was a shapeshifter in various places he took different guises. But the puka himself, well, he was full of surprises. He could have been an eagle down in Waterford. Up in Derry, he was a small little grey man. In Louth, Louth, sorry, Louth, he was a, well, he was a black hole. In different places, he was a dark horse, long ears, or a tall rabbit with long ears too. But this is the story of the Puka and the Piper. Now the Piper was a Piper, a trad player, that only knew one tune, the Black Rogue. And that's the tune you can hear right now. The Black Rogue was a slow, maudling sort of tune. It was nice, and well, this particular Piper, he was from Galway and well, he knew just what pubs and places to go to to play this one tune where he might get a bowl of broth, or a cup of soup, or an old sandwich, and a pint, and maybe a short one. And he'd go around to the town between pubs and taverns and play this one tune over and over and over. And he never got sick of it. And people just knew him as the piper with the one tune. One night, it being on Iahauna the day before, the day of the puka, well, he was travelling the long, cold, dark and cloudy way home. And, well, he heard a strange noise coming up behind him, as if there was a breath in the back of his head. Well, he turned around. He didn't see anyone there at all. He was fairly sure there was someone there. He looked to the right of him. No one there still. He looked to the left of him. Not a sign of anyone to be around. And suddenly, right in front of him, there was a strong horse's face in front of him. Tall, dark ears, golden eyes peering out to his surprise. And a voice from this huge horse came echoing out of his mouth. So you're a musician, are you? Eh, uh, I am, yeah. Great. Eh, uh, well, I only know the one tune. I, uh, don't That's know. one more to me. Uh, uh, there's a party on right. in the Queen of the Banshee's house. And we need we need some entertainment, so you're, you're going to have to come with us. I don't want to go. Hop on me back now. Yeah. Well, he didn't have a chance because he was thrown onto the back of the horse and they were galloping. They were going so fast now. They were jumping over the wall, past trees, past lakes and rivers, blurring so fast past all the landscape of Ireland that he didn't know where he was going. He couldn't tell by the landscape. It was dark after all and it was shrouded in mist until the puka brought him to the entrance of a big, vast, dark cave on the side of a mountain. And suddenly, The puka reared his legs and kicked, opening wide a huge door. The puka shapeshifted and became a tall, dark man with pale skin, dark eyes, pointy ears and golden eyes. Now, interestingly, the puka walked on down and, well, the piper, he followed him. 
He walked all the way down. He saw strange lights in the cave and he saw twinkling. He heard a noise from down below. And when he came around the corner, he saw, well, a huge banquet laid out. Emeralds, sapphires, lights and jewels, all of the most beautiful ornaments he'd ever seen, as well as the most delicious feast he'd ever laid his eyes on. At the top of the table was the queen of the Banshee, strange ethereal looking woman with a face half gone. There was Kaliaks and hags sitting all around what looked like a giant goat that was at the other end. A goose and a gander he recognised from last week's supper walked on past. He was very strange but decided not to comment on them. As he came towards the table he was offered some food. He knew better than to take any though. And suddenly the puka turned down to him and said, Well, it's time for you. But I told you, I only know one tune, and it's not even a very good one. What are you doing? But the puka reached out and touched the piper on his hands, and suddenly he knew all of the tunes. He was able to play slip jigs. He no, he was playing tunes, jigs, reels, polkas, turnpipes, everything in between. And he had never played so well. And suddenly musical instruments were coming out of the cave, playing along with him. And they were jumping and leaping and dancing and singing and shouting and kicking about the place. The hags, the calyx, the bears, the goats, the goblins, the creatures, the banshee and the puka were shape-shifting and dancing in between. They'd never had so much fun. All the while, the piper played music he didn't know was in his bones. He played it so well, so perfectly, so flawlessly. It was as if they were in his blood. And he played it left and up and down, right and inside out. All of the tunes he'd never even know he knew until the sun started to rise. And sure enough, this night was coming to an end. And the puka grabbed him to drag him back, but announced to everybody that it was probably time. <clears throat> you must pay this entertainer. Because the book of news should never not pay your entertainment. And sure enough, everyone reached in and threw a gold coin at the piper who gathered it up. He'd never seen so much money in his life. He put it into his pockets, could hardly believe what was happening. But he went out of the puka now to see the sun nice and bright in the sky. He couldn't really believe it, but he was thrown on top of the back of the puka once more. And the puka went rearing off. And now in his full horse form, the piper had to cling on for dear life as they were going past lakes and rivers, mountains and streams, over hedgegroves and trees, until they landed close, close enough back to where the piper lived. The puka threw the piper off unceremoniously. He landed. He turned around to say goodbye to the puka, but the puka was already gone. The puka never says goodbye. Now the piper, he ran in home and knocked on the door. Mommy, mommy, let me in, let me in. With the door open. What are you doing? Said his mother. You've been out all night. Get in out of you, you scoundrel. Come on in out of that, you absolute rascal, you. you I smell it, drunk you. Get in out of that. No, 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 ma'am, no. You've no idea. I've I've just been away on a wild chase with the puka. I, and I was playing music and tunes and jigs and reels, polkas and turnpipes, and all the greatest tunes I've ever heard. I was playing it for the Queen of the Banshee. You can probably understand why his mother didn't really believe him. But he insisted on showing her all of his new tunes and took out the pipes and began to play. <laughs> ah, the neighbours were shouting to be telling him to be quiet. Quit that racket in there! So the mother told him to split and stop that. You're a liar. Don't believe you anyway. So he was embarrassed. And he tried to tell a few people the story, but no one would hear of it. But he reached inside his pockets, and he still had a bag of golden coins that the fairy folk had gifted him. So he went and he sold his old pipes, bought a new set, 
He bought a banjo guitar, a ukulele, a flute as well, even a fiddle, and decided for that next year, he would put to practice all of the hours he'd ever tried and could muster of the waking time to practice. And that's exactly what he did. All those tunes were still in his head from the night he spent with the puka. And so he spent an entire year learning them. The following year, at the celebration in Galway for Halloween on Iahauna, he came and he played some of the best music the town had ever heard. Full of the slip jigs and reels they had never heard. And this piper became island famous. And he was always, no matter how fa famous he became, he was always asked to play that one tune, the Black Robe. A tune he knew at the very start of this story. But despite all of the tunes he'd learned, that was still the tune he played the most. This podcast was produced and edited by Oshin Ryan, with story by Aaron Hegarty and live music by Oshin Ryan and Alan Homan. You can find out more about us and book a private show on our website candlelittales.ie, follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales, and for videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has Candlelit Tales for kids. Hashtag Candlelittle Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channels really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales, or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We would love to hear back from you with any questions you may have, so please contact us directly or leave your question in the comments section below. Because what we really want to do is get these stories out there, share them with as many people as possible. And so anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we especially appreciate you listening.